Christianity has an expiration date. And so do I. Turn to Luke chapter 22. I'm going to show you what the scriptures have to say about this. And I don't just mean death, okay? Everybody dies, you know. Um, is appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. Um, certainly we know that. But I'm not talking about that in this study. I'm talking about something else. Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 36 and 37. Luke chapter 22, verse 36. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Good verse for self-defense there. I've talked about that in other studies. Won't get into it here. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. The things concerning Jesus Christ had an end. Um, his disciples were kind of sad to see him go. You know, they're over there in the book of Acts, chapter 1, they're, they're watching and they see him. He, he ascends up into heaven and, and the clouds receive him out of their sight and they're still looking. And, you know, two angels show up and they say, you know, don't keep looking up here. You know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Go, you have work to do. Um, but if the angels wouldn't have showed up, they'd probably still be looking. <laughs> you know, just, well, not still. It won't last that long. But um, they were look, looking up. Um, but the things concerning the Lord had an end. The Lord had work to do. He wanted to go up there to heaven. And then he's going to come back. A lot of things there for the future. But the whole point I'm trying to make here is the things concerning Jesus Christ had an end. And we, those of us that are saved, the things concerning us have an end as well. Why? Because we are members of the body of Christ. You see, it's already written what's going to happen. There isn't some kind of a thing of where we're just kind of in this uh, a millennial kind of existence where everything kind of happened in the first century and it's we're just kind of floating along through the this misty veil of we don't really know what the future is and, and whatever. If you're a Bible believing Christian, you know exactly what's coming. You can look at this world and you can say, okay, I can see the Antichrist system being built. I'm supposed to hinder this system. Um, I'm supposed to be a witness for Jesus Christ. But the next event, the next big event, is the catching up of the body of Christ. We're going to be going up to be with the Lord, as John did in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, and then the Antichrist is released, or is unveiled um, in Revelation chapter 6. So Christians go up before the Antichrist is revealed, and I've done all the studies to prove that. You want to argue about it? Well, you know, don't waste my time in the comment section. Again, I'm not going to go and fight in the comments and whatever else. I'm not going to do that. I've done the studies. I've done the research over the years. I've preached it. I've answered everybody's questions. There isn't any other thing that, you know, somebody comes up with. Oh, I never thought about that. I've heard all the stuff. Okay, so don't waste my time in the comment section. I'm not going to, you know, argue with people in the comments. But the whole point is the things concerning me have an end. And you know what? I look out there at this world and I see a lot of the wickedness and things, and I see um, the possibilities of um, World War III could be kicking off, you know, any day now um, in terms of Russia attacking, and then it will be the, that's the thing, you know, the pretext for war and World War III and all this other stuff. It's not going to go good for America. We don't have the industry to, to fight World War III. Um, we don't have the money for it. Uh, we don't have the morale for it. Uh, America's being set up for a, a very bad destruction. Um, what's going to happen to the internet when all this stuff goes down? I mean, you could be looking at the end of this ministry that I'm not going to be here on YouTube anymore within a month. We don't know. But I can see that there's an expiration date. It's just a little bit blurry right now. Um, I still use Windows 7 computers. You know why? Because Windows 10 just messes with my head. I don't, I don't, I can't figure it out and whatever else. I have a Windows 10 laptop that I use off grid, but if I connect a thing to the internet, it's just terrible. I hate it. I can't stand it. I, I don't like that type of system. My favorite computer ever was Windows XP. Windows 7 is eh, okay. It's a, it's a second place to Windows XP. 
Um, but I, I started out with Windows, you know, ME, Millennial Edition or Millennium Edition. And um, I went from that to Windows Vista and then to Windows XP and then uh, to 7, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, could I learn Windows 10? Well, maybe. But, you know, at some point in time, the technology is going to get way too uh, Orwellian and artificial intelligence on all that other stuff. And I don't want anything to do with it. It doesn't compute in my brain here. It's like the vehicles out there. Uh, these new vehicles and everything else with all the smart technology and all this other stuff. And you can, you know, I remember talking to an older woman at a Baptist church I used to go to and I preached there and, and whatever. And she was telling the story about how that this car, she, you know, you have to say, you speak to it in reverse or whatever, and it'll go in reverse. And I don't even know what kind of car it was. Sounds like a nightmare. And you, you talk to the thing and it'll, it puts itself in gear or you, whatever else. That's a nightmare to me, you know, and, uh, the modern vehicles and they got these places where you stick your smartphone and it charges it for you and all these other smart technologies and all this stuff. And it'll tell you when you need to, you know, put air in your tires or something. It, that stuff just is something I can't even relate to. And, um, I have old vehicles. I like old vehicles and, um, but my old vehicles, a lot of times the parts are made in China. <laughs> uh, that's a problem um, because China doesn't know how to make any kind of car parts. Um, you know, we always talk about the MIC rule, made in China rule, and that is that it'll last you for about two or three years. And I've experienced that many times over the years. You buy something made in China, two or three years it'll work okay, and then it fails. <laughs> Um, you might, of course, there's exceptions to that rule. I understand that, but we just say as a general rule, the MIC rule usually works out. Uh, made in China means it's going to be uh, planned obsolescence. It breaks down in a period of time. There's an expiration date on it, and uh, you have to replace it. Um, but I look at this world, and I say uh, they want to bring in this thing of um, people are going to be driving electric vehicles in the future. It's a mandate. You'll be living in a smart city. You'll be driving an electric vehicle. No, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will, Brian, because if you don't, you're going to be executed or whatever, then I'll be executed. Um, I will not drive an electric, electric vehicle. Not doing it. Not happening. Um, I wouldn't be able to live out here if I have to follow all these electric you know, EV mandates and whatever else. Um, I'm not doing it. Just as simple as that. There is an expiration date on me um, and me extending that time period is dependent on how much I fight, how much I try to hinder the Antichrist system. If I can hinder the Antichrist and he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, it's talking about the body of Christ. Um, if I can do that, then I have some more time. If I can continue to fight and if you can continue to pray for this ministry, and for those that support the ministry, we continue to do this. I can continue to be preaching the word of God online. And you can hear preaching and Bible teaching and things like that, that you won't hear in your church building. Um, it's just my conviction. I will preach what the Bible preaches uh, without apology. Uh, just as simple as that. But there's an expiration date. It's a little bit flexible, like I said, but... It will come to a point in time where I'm going to be going home to be with Jesus Christ. And the, body, and the Lord's going to say, okay, to the body of Christ, your work is done. Time to come home. Come up hither. A lot of the uh, disciples, they went to be with the Lord. Uh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Before John did. John, he's an old man. They take him, they throw him out there on the island of Patmos. Um, exiled out there. And he's thinking, boy, I sure wish I could talk to Paul. He's gone. And Peter, yeah, he's not around anymore. And most of my friends that we're in ministry with, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, it gets weird, too. You know, you, you get older and you start to, you know, realize your grandparents are all dead. And then your parents are dead. And then you start to see siblings dying off. And, you know, your aunts and uncles, they die off, too. And, and then you start to see siblings dying off. And it's kind of a... <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> uh, I think it's kind of getting close to, for, for me. I remember I had a neighbor when we lived in Bridgewater, and he was telling me, he said that um, every member of his family had died. All of his siblings had died of cancer. 
and they all died right around the time that they were in their mid 50s i think to to 60 years old you know 55 to 60 in that range there and he said i'm going to be 55 next year <laughs> and it's kind of a and every single one of them they all died right in that time period and he's looking and he's the youngest youngest of them and he's saying my expiration date's coming up yeah so hopefully you don't have one that's quite that uh, serious and dramatic but I know some people do. Second Timothy chapter four, let's go there. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through eight. Okay, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's what I've tried to do. All down through the years that King James Video Ministries has been around. We, I started out in 2007 making DVDs. 2008 I got on YouTube, November of 2008. And I started putting out ministry type videos, I think 2009 going into 2010. And um, I've been doing it since then, trying to get out as much as I can and doing just research and me working basically seven days a week. I'll take a day off occasionally, you know, whatever, but pretty much working seven days a week since, you know, 2010 or so, 2000, well, I should, I should say 2012, 2013, right in that area, I guess. You know, basically 11 years, 10, 11 years, something like that. I've been working seven days a week. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, and the reason I did it is because I take verse 2 to be very serious. But look at verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Um, there's an expiration date. You see it there? The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Um, I had a lot more people that were serious about the videos in the past than I do right now. I realize I have more subscribers and, and things, but a lot of people, they see all the drama that comes from being in ministry like I am in and the controversial stuff I say and there's arguments and back and forth and whatever else. And they're drawn in because of that. They get, you know, entertained or whatever, I guess. And they, they might see a video and they say, wow, I've never seen this type of thing before. This guy's really knows the book or whatever. And I'm saying that people say that about me. I'm not trying to, you know, brag about myself or whatever, but you know, people come along and they see things and they hear things and they're there for a little bit of time and they, you know, they come and they go. Um, but I'm seeing that a lot of people, are falling into this thing of the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. You know, I remember some guy wrote a comment the one time that uh, watching one of my videos, it's one of my sermons, it's over an hour long. He said, it's a form of works-based salvation. <laughs> what? <laughs> works-based salvation? Yeah, to sit there, you know, you could get it said in a lot, you know, shorter time. Um, that's not how preaching works. Okay, you, you read the New Testament, the book of Acts, and you have the Apostle Paul, he preaches until midnight, and then he preaches till the morning. Guy falls asleep, falls out, you know, goes down and hits, and he's laying there dead, and Paul comes down and, you know, raises him up from the dead, brings him back up, and he continues preaching. You know, probably at least 12 hours of preaching. You know, I've heard of uh, a missionary the one time, and um, he was in China, I think, or something, and he, he got, you know, preaching, and he was, you know, two or three hours that he was preaching, to a house church and he got done and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, I, I didn't even notice the time. And they just looked at each other and they said, and they looked at him and they said, why would you be sorry? We want you to continue. Please continue. We'll sit here all day. He said, we well, haven't had anything to eat or anything. They said, we don't need it. We're here in the word of God. Please continue. Go as long as you can. You know, here in America, oh, man, it's, 10 minute video oh i don't know if i have 10 minutes to watch you know turn your bible and all this other stuff you know half hour oh man you know the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine meaning that there's an expiration date for those who are in ministry verse 4 they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables 
Uh, there's a lot of fables out there that are come off as, quote, Bible doctrine. Um, a lot of people are preaching heresy and ridiculous nonsense, and it's just a bunch of fables. But there's also a lot of fables here on YouTube and all across the Internet, a lot of movies and a lot of other stupid nonsense. And people sit down and watch a two-hour movie, but they won't watch a 30-minute video telling them how to get to heaven. Pretty sickening. Verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Again, I've tried to live by these scriptures. I try to make full proof of my ministry. It doesn't mean I'm going to tell you every little thing, every personal detail, um, tell you exactly where my property is located at here. It's private property. You know, give me some respect here. I don't want people just showing up. I don't want people showing up at my office, you know, without being, you know, saying that they're coming or whatever else. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I've tried to be very honest about. Um, I'm not going to tell exactly how much money we make through donations or whatever. I don't tell that stuff because it's between the people that give and God, right? I don't even keep track of it. I don't, you know, sit down and just chart out every single little cent that we make and I have to, you know, do this or do that or whatever. It's up to, it's between people and the Lord. If you've been blessed by the ministry, you give to the ministry. It's that simple. The ministry continues. You say, I want to extend out the expiration date. Um, I mean, if I don't make a living eventually at this, I'm going to go do something else. That's what I have to do. I'm not going to deny the faith and, and you know, not provide for my own and be worse than an infidel. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight, like the other video I did. I'm not going to do that. I will go and I will work again doing some kind of secular work. I can do that. That's what I'll do. Um, but then you aren't going to see the videos coming out. I mean, right now, like I said, I work seven days a week doing this. Um, there are times I will answer certain comments and things, or I look at the comments as much as I can and I get letters. I can't answer all the letters, uh, but I'm, I mean, this is a very big responsibility. I mean, I work very hard at this and I'm trying to do my very best. And there's times I have sincere questions. People ask me, have you ever heard of so-and-so, or have you ever heard of this movement or that movement or whatever? And I have to spend days researching it. And there are a lot of times I put my family uh, obligations to the side. And I say, you know, Hey, um, we can't go to this place or go do this or whatever else, because I have to work today. My wife and my son are over another part of the property and, you know, doing some, some work, you know, uh, pruning things and cutting, uh, different types of, uh, trees down and things that we don't want on the property. Not, not, you know, big trees, I'm saying little stuff, but they want to come to the property. Many times I'm working. Well, today I said, hey, you know what? We'll go to the property. I'll come out here and get eaten alive by mosquitoes and things. <laughs> uh, and you can be here at the property enjoying yourself. I can't always just take time off and do this. Um, again, I take the scripture seriously. I try to make full proof of my ministry. Just to put that out there. Verse 6, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Um, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Another one of the key scriptures that proves that we are supposed to be looking for the appearing of Jesus Christ, not for the Antichrist to show up. All right, um, another verse which proves that the catching up of the body of Christ is before the time of Jacob's trouble, before the Antichrist even is revealed. Again, I've done all the studies on that. But um, <clears throat> there's an expiration date. You see it there again. And, you know, you get to the end of your life and you start to say, you know, as a Christian, um, I've done what I could for the Lord and his calls. And the time has come now where these people no longer are enduring sound doctrine. They don't want to hear about it. We've had our family arguments. We've had our issues. They know where I stand. Uh, I know where they stand. I, there's no more witnessing to them. I've said everything I could say. I've said what I could say to the people at work. I've uh, talked to the people at uh, the church group that I'm with, and, and I've tried to witness, and I've tried to, you know, and you see the expiration date, and it's approaching. The things concerning me have an end. I honestly don't know how much longer I'll be on YouTube. Um, I really don't know. I don't know how things are going to go. Um, it's one of the reasons why I do hope for war, because if there's war, 
then there's a chance that uh, people might want to hear about the truth. There's a chance people might be open to the gospel. But if there's no war, World War III and the wicked people continue in this country, um, I'm falling out of popular favor. I mean, I've never been popular, but what I'm saying is um, it's getting to the point where I can see people don't care about me. You know, the vast majority of people, they don't. Um, very similar to what the Lord went through. You know, dies on the cross and everybody's, you know, fleeing and forsaking him and, and whatever else. And he comes back up from the, the dead and he's walking around and his own disciples, you know, are doubting him. <laughs> you know, we thought that he was the one that, you know, thought he was the Messiah. And, and you know, and I, don't, I guess maybe we were wrong or something. I don't know. And Jesus upbraids them for that. Can you relate? Second Corinthians chapter six. Do you feel useless sometimes? Do you feel like uh, you just don't really see what else the Lord has for you? Second Corinthians chapter six, verses one and two. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Um, now is the day of salvation. Well, you know, I'll wait for another, you know, 10 years and see how Brother Brian's doing in that time, uh, whatever else. I might not be here in 10 years. I might not be here in 10 days. I might not be here in, you know, by the end of the year. I have no idea. Um... I don't feel that my race is completely run at this point in time. There's a bunch of projects that are, are very pressing, and I feel the Lord wants me to do those projects. I would like to write some more books. I really desperate, desperately would like to write some more books. I have to figure out some things on that. Um, you know, there are, you know, the video thing. Yeah, I, I'd like to see what happens to YouTube after, you know, uh, you know, I don't know which way the selection is going to go, if they're going to suspend the selections because of World War III, or if they will say, well, we're going to bring out, you know, Joe Biden, they can't run him again. Let's just be honest about that. Um, unless it would just be for a temporary thing that there would be then a military coup or whatever else that they get rid of him. But, um, you know, they'll probably, there's a lot of talk about Gavin Newsom stepping in as the Democrat presidential candidate. And, um, that would be very horrible. But, you know, he's a Jesuit. Uh, Donald Trump is Jesuit educated as well. So uh, either one, you're getting a Jesuit. Um, but, you know, Trump, uh, they're, you know, playing the Trump card there that he's in on this trial and whatever else. He could go to jail and, and things and you know, all the drama that they're going to put into this thing coming up. And, you know, America's just crashing. I'll be talking about that in another study here uh, in a little bit. But, um, What's going to happen? If a conservative president gets in, uh, if it would be nice if they would take over YouTube and say, okay, you can say what you want on there now and whatever, but I think we know better than that. Um, even if a supposed conservative got in there, it will be pro-Roman Catholic and not, you know, for heretics like me. Um, but, you know, the Lord could do something. I understand if there's enough people that try to turn back to the Lord and say, we'd like to actually, you know, have the truth preached. Maybe I'm not going to expire at that point in time. Maybe the Lord would say, okay, I'm going to give you a few more years, Brian. I don't know. You know, I can't say what Paul said there. I can't say that, um, you know, that I'm, I've finished my course and I've kept the faith. And, you know, I can't say that. Uh, I don't know at this point in time. But um, just thought I'd put that study out there. I got to thinking about that, this whole thing and... Uh, at some point in time, you know, if they, they come out with Internet ID. Again, that's another thing just to put this out there. They come out with some kind of a, a new system or setup or something that you have to biometrically scan to get on YouTube or, you know, go through a psychiatric evaluation to be an influencer on YouTube or any other, you know, social media platform. Um, no. It would go to mail order type of stuff. I'd have to do offline video and little booklets or whatever else. And so... Um, I'll just put this out there that, uh, 
anybody out there, if you have any suggestions, some thoughts on uh, what I could do if YouTube goes down. Um, you know, I obviously the days of DVD production are, you know, pretty much over. Um, some people still have DVD players, but that's kind of an old technology. And, you know, it's, it's not the best technology because you're dealing with a 45 minute, you know, amount of material that you can put on a DVD if it's a higher definition type of thing. And, and, you know, double sided DVDs and Blu-ray and I get that, but it's very challenging and very tricky to do that. Um, you know, uh, have the little external hard drives, the little USB drives and whatever that you can fit more information on those. Would that be something that would work? Is there some other type of a new technology that would work with older stuff like I have, you know, that we could put some things out or, you know, I, I don't know. I've been praying about this for a while, some way to get the truth out there that's not censored like it is online. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments section, but um, I don't know. Just something I think about from time to time, the thing of the expiration date. Um, how much longer? And, uh, you know, for me personally, um, if the Lord would say, I'm going to give you, I'm going to leave it up to you, Brian. When do you want the catching up to happen? Today. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Uh, save me from the wickedness of this earth, Lord. Save me from this insanity and all the weird, crazy stuff that's going on. I'd like to leave now, please. Um, I'm okay. I'll stay around. I'll do what the Lord wants me to do. You pray for the ministry. You're extending the expiration date out there. You give to the ministry. You're extending it out there. You, you, you know, help me get the videos out. Do what you can. Pray about some kind of ministry that you can do. Not a, you know, one of the mistakes I made early on when I wanted to be in ministry is I was trying to join underneath the headship of some pastor or whatever that I could, you know, run a, do a tract ministry at a church or teach Sunday school or, you know, something like that. And the Lord just, no, no, it never worked out. And the Lord put it in my heart. I want you to get out there with nobody above you but me. Um, the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, uh, not some hireling and whatever else and things. Um, you know, it's fine early on to have a man of God that teaches you the word of God. That's fine. But you need to get to the point where you grow up and you say, okay, uh, I need to go out on my own now. Um, I think the worst thing in the world would have been if, if somehow I would have, you know, when I met Peter Ruckman many years ago, if he would have said, hey, brother, you know, I'd like you to come down here and get under the ministry and, you know, do whatever else. That would have ruined me. Um, it would have. I need to be my own man. You need to be your own man out there, young men. Um, don't, you don't have to send me tracks and send me, you know, th things and whatever. And do you approve of this? Whatever. No, um, it's fine to send it to me and say, oh, what do you think? That's fine. But uh, ultimately, it's between you and God. Um, and, you know, figure out some need that's out there. Uh, you know, hey, um, I'm going to compile a list of verses that appear in Catholic Bibles and, and how they, you know, line up with new versions. And then I can make a little tract. I can write it out myself. Uh, study the thing. You know, again, I'd like to encourage some of you out there. Study the things of book publishing and um is there something that could be made that would be like a tract, but it would be some kind of a, a little electronic thing that you could mass produce and get it out there? And let's think of ways that we can be creative and get the gospel to be spread out. Think of what would appeal to people in terms of that they would see it and say, oh, I'd like to see that. You know, um, I'm not saying be worldly. I'm just simply saying, you know, what types of technologies could be used to get the truth out? And I'd be open to that myself. I'd like to hear what people have to say. Um, we're still uh, considering the thing of making little booklets printed on our own, but I need to get some things set up before I can do that. And, uh, you know, just we're busy. We're very busy. Um, it isn't, you know, it's, you can say, well, I go, go back through your videos and I've seen you've made different promises. You're going to try to work on this or try to work on that. Um, and you never did. You never brought this stuff out, brother. What's going on? Well, uh, life, uh, responsibilities with the ministry, things come up, 
things change, plans change, goals change, whatever else. Um, so is there an expiration date on King James Video Ministries? Yes, there is. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to be, how far out there in the future. I'm surprised I've actually made it this long on YouTube. <laughs> um, but I know why. It's because of people like you praying, people that support the ministry. Um, PayPal still hasn't shut me down. And I'm thankful for that. Thank you to the people out there in PayPal. Thank you for being open-minded enough to let this ministry continue. Um, I appreciate that. Again, you know, PayPal was never even my idea. Had a brother from Australia years ago, uh, liked the ministry and, and whatever, and he said, I want to give to the ministry. And PayPal would be a great way to do it. And he encouraged me to set up an account with PayPal, and I've been with them ever since. And I'm still there, and they're still allowing me to take, you know, donations and things. Great. Praise the Lord. Um, that extends out the expiration date. Okay, Jesus... It's already, it was written in the scriptures. He knew his plans, everything there. It, it was definitely fixed. But when it comes to me and it comes to other ministries out there, um, the expiration date is flexible. I mean, ultimately God knows where it is, but for me, I don't know where that is. And, um, you know, God's in eternity. He can see the beginning and from the end and he sees everything in between. Um, but for me, I don't know. So I'll stop ranting now, and I'm going to be moving the camera for the next two studies. And uh, so look for those when they come out. And I'm probably going to mix up the order of these videos a little bit. I'm not sure yet, but uh, that will be it. Thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you for your support. See you in the next video.